Hey guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and welcome to our next presidential series installment. I'm here today with Henry, of course. Hi. And first and foremost, we want to give a big birthday shout out to one of our biggest fans, Gracie, mm -hmm. who is one of our subscribers and is always commenting on our videos. She just celebrated her ninth birthday the other day. Yeah. So we want to say what? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Gracie. Happy birthday. We hope you had a wonderful day and we hope you had just a fabulous birthday. You got everything you wanted and you made a real good wish when you blew out the birthday cake. So now, what are we going to do this week, Henry? We're going to take a look at the 22nd and the what? 24th president. That's right. The 22nd and the 24th president. Who is that, Henry? Grover Cleveland. That's right. Grover Cleveland. The only president from our home state of... New Jersey. New Jersey, that's right. So, before we get into Grover Cleveland, what do we need the people to do, Henry? Hit subscribe down below. Go ahead. Hit, sub hit, the, hit subscribe down below, leave that low, leave likes, and give us comments and questions. That's right. You did and a thumbs good. up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You did a good job. <laughs> hit subscribe down below. Leave those comments and questions. Like Henry said, we love those. And, of course, hit that little notification bell so you can be notified every time we release a video, which is when, Henry? Every single week. Every single week. Every That's week. right. So now, here we go. We're going to get into the 22nd and 24th president of the United States. The big guy behind us, Grover Cleveland. And this is... Dead History. Dead History. Hey guys, welcome back. TJ here, of course, Dead History, here with Henry, of I, course, and the guy behind us, who's that, Henry? Grover Cleveland. That's right, and what number president was he? 22nd and 24th. That's right, he was the only president ever in the history of our country from to New serve, Jersey. well, from New Jersey, you know, you're right, and to serve two, two non-consecutive two. terms. Yeah. So that means that he was president for four years, mm -hmm. then he lost re-election, mm -hmm. But then four years later, he got reelected again to do a second term. Yep. So yes, the only president ever to two ever. serve two non-consecutive terms. And another cool thing about Grover Cleveland that the people probably don't know, his first name wasn't Grover. His first name was Stephen. Yep. Stephen Grover Stephen. Cleveland. Grover was his middle name. And so, Cleveland was his last name? That's right. So it was actually Stephen Cleveland, but he went by the name of Grover. He was also the first and only president to ever get married in the White House. What? Yeah. He was a bachelor at first and then met his wife. We're going to get into all that. And he got married at the White House. And there was also a really contentious election that went on when he ran for president. Even something about him having an illegitimate child. So out of wedlock, that means somebody that like had a child with somebody they weren't married to. But... They didn't even know if they were really the, the father or anything. So, like, they didn't know. And the people that were running against them, they tried to use that against them in the election. Mm. Crazy, right? Yeah. So we're going to get into all that stuff. Of course, our New Jersey native son, Grover Cleveland. Cleveland. This is the one we've been waiting for. Very proud of Grover Cleveland being here from New Jersey. So what we need you to do is sit back and relax. What do they got to do, Henry? Grab... <laughs> Grab those potato chips. That's right. Grab those potato chips. The popcorn, the pretzels, whatever you're going to have for a snack. And sit back and relax and enjoy and watch the 22nd and 24th president, the next of our presidential series installment, the big guy behind us, right? The big guy. The big guy. Grover Cleveland. The Grover Cleveland. Enjoy. Hey, guys. Welcome. TJ here with Dead History. And welcome to our next presidential series installment, taking a look at the 22nd and the 24th president of the United States, Grover Cleveland, our New Jersey native. Uh, I am flying solo for the audio portions of our Grover Cleveland uh, video here. Uh, Henry's not with me for the audio, but uh, I'm going to jump right in. As Henry and I did uh, touch on in our video opening, this, uh, this one kind of holds a bit near and dear to our hearts. Henry and I are both born and raised New Jersey natives, New Jersey boys. So uh, Grover Cleveland being the only president from New Jersey uh, and the only one buried here in New Jersey. So it's uh, very, 
very cool for us. Um, you know, right in our own backyard. So this is going to be fun. Of course, in part one here, we're going to take a look at his birthplace and his childhood and, you know, his youth and his young adulthood and all that sort of thing that we usually touch on in the part ones before his presidency. So I'm going to hop right in here. Stephen Grover Cleveland was born on March 18th of 1837 in Caldwell, New Jersey. He was born to Anne and Richard Fowley Cleveland. Cleveland's father was a Congregational and Presbyterian minister who was originally from Connecticut. His mother was from Baltimore and was the daughter of a bookseller. On his father's side, Cleveland was descended from English ancestors the first of the family having emigrated to Massachusetts from Cleveland, England, in 1635. There was a place called Cleveland, England. His father's maternal grandfather, Richard Fowley Jr., fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill and was the son of an immigrant from Guernsey. On his mother's side, Cleveland was descended from Anglo-Irish Protestants and German Quakers from Philadelphia. Cleveland was distant, distantly related to General Moses Cleveland, after whom the city of Cle Cleveland was named. So a couple things that I just want to kind of touch on uh, regarding those things right there that I just basically uh, kind of uh, touched on and alluded to. A um, couple really cool things, in my opinion, that Cleveland's uh, name was not Grover. Um, and a lot of people don't know that I actually, I did know that, uh, but it's something that I had kind of forgotten over the years. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's pretty interesting to me. His real first name was Steven. It was not Grover. He used his middle name of Grover as an adult. You know, maybe he just tired of using the name Stephen Cleveland <laughs> in grade school. Who knows? Uh, and as I also uh, touched on, yes, he is a distant relative of the guy they named the city of Cleveland after. Uh, but Grover Cleveland did not grow up in Ohio. As I said, he was born in New Jersey and he later moved to New York State. Um, but pretty interesting stuff. A lot of people, especially about his first name, uh, they do not know that at all. So pretty cool. Uh, moving back now to his youth. Grover Cleveland was the fifth of nine children. He was uh, named Stephen Grover in honor of the first pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Caldwell, where his father was pastor at the time. He became known as Grover in his adult life. In 1841, the Cleveland family moved to Fayetteville, New York, where Grover spent much of his childhood. Neighbors later described him as full of fun and inclined to play pranks and fond of outdoor sports. In 1850, Grover Cleveland's father, Richard, moved his family to Clinton, New York, to work as district secretary for the American Home Missionary Society. Despite his father's dedication to his missionary work, his income was insufficient for the large family. Financial conditions forced him to remove Grover from school and place him in a two-year mercantile apprenticeship in Fayetteville. The experience was valuable and brief, and the living conditions quite austere. Grover returned to Clinton and his schooling at the completion of the apprentice, apprentice contract. In 1853, when missionary work began to take a toll on the health of Cleveland's father, he took an assignment in Holland, Patton, New York, near Utica, and moved his family again. Shortly after, however, Cleveland's father died from a gastric ulcer. The younger Cleveland was said to have learned about his father's death from a boy selling newspapers. So quite interesting. Uh, Cleveland uh, came from a big family. His father, a pastor and a minister, did not make a whole lot of money. They moved around a few times. Cleveland, of course, born here in Caldwell, New Jersey, um, but grew up a lot of his childhood in New York. Um, Cleveland, what you're seeing here now is actually the Grover Cleveland birthplace that is here in Caldwell, New Jersey. Uh, I visited here back last year in 2020. Of course, it was closed due to COVID, uh, but there are some really interesting things inside of the Grover Cleveland uh, birthplace uh, that I'll touch on and tell you about. Now, 
all the pictures you're going to see of the outside for, for the most part, unless it's an old, you know, picture from back, uh, you know, in the day, um, all of those things that you're going to see uh, from the outside are taken by me. Pictures you're going to see of the interior of the house are not taken by me. Those are stock photos that I got online. So Grover Cleveland, birthplace in New Jersey. He was born in this modest house in Caldwell, New Jersey on March 18th of 1837. Stephen Grover Cleveland was the 22nd and 24th president of the United States, the only president to serve two non-consecutive terms. The house was the residence of the minister at the local Presbyterian church. Built in 1832, the man's, as it was known, consisted of a two-story frame main section with a one-story kitchen on the east side and a one-story lean-to at the rear. Simple federal and Greek revival details add a touch of sophistication to a simple vernacular building. The large Cleveland family lived here from 1834 to 1841. Cleveland began his political career in western New York and rose quickly from mayor of Buffalo in 1881 to president of the United States in 1885. He defe defeated by Republican Benjamin Harrison in 1888, he easily won re-election in 1892. Um, so that's just a little bit. Uh, in 1841, Cleveland's father moved to a church in Fayetteville, New York, where young Grover, he rarely used his first name as I said, he received his schooling. At the age of 13, he went to work to help family finances after his father became ill. He abandoned his hopes of attending college when his father died in 1853. Grover Cleveland soon moved to Buffalo, where he worked briefly on his uncle's farm before entering a local law firm as an apprentice clerk. In 1859, he passed the bar and he opened his own law practice. He became a prominent lawyer and Democratic politician. Grover Cleveland was elected mayor of Buffalo in 1881. He soon developed a reputation as a reformer because of his opposition to corruption and patronage. As governor of New York from 1883 to 1884, he exhibited bipartisan independence. He worked closely with Republican Assembly member Theodore Roosevelt to pass municipal reform legislation that gained him national recognition but angered New York City's powerful Tammany Hall Democratic Organization. So, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, the Presbyterian Church Mans is one of the two oldest houses in Caldwell, New Jersey. The church enlarged the house several times between 1848 and 1870. Interest in preserving Cleveland's birthplace began, began when he was governor of New York and grew as his political career continued. The birthplace house first opened to the public in 1913. The state of New Jersey bought the house from the Cleveland Birthplace Memorial Association in 1934 and now operates as, it operates it as a historic house museum. The Grover Cleveland Birthplace State Historic Site is the only house museum in the country dedicated to the interpretation of President Cleveland's life. It is the nation's leading repository of Cleveland artifacts and political memorabilia. Restored to their 1837 appearance when the Cleveland family lived in the house, the first floor rooms offer a glimpse at the modest beginnings of the future president. Among the artifacts on display from Cleveland's early years are his cradle and original family portraits. An exhibition gallery reflects his later life. So uh, pretty cool stuff. I'm going to kind of share with you a few things from the interior. Again, these are not my photos because I've never been inside the interior. But these are some cool, fun things that are inside the interior of his birthplace in Caldwell, New Jersey. There is actually a piece of Grover Cleveland's wedding cake inside of his birthplace museum. Uh, the humble house where future U.S. President Grover Cleveland was uh, born has been preserved pretty much as it was in 1837. Visitors can see his cradle his marriage certificate, and the bed on which he was born. There's a big plaque set into the wall over it. But we're here to see the cake. We're sort of blessed with it and cursed with it, said Sharon Farrell, curator of the Grover Cleveland birthplace, as she has showed many people over the years uh, her attraction's most famous artifact, a chunk of cake from the wedding of America's 22nd president on June 2nd of 1886. 
The cake chunk in a presentation box designed by Tiffany doesn't look anything like a modern fluffy wedding cake topped with a tiny briding room. It's a fruit cake whose sugary embalming has preserved it into its third century. Larger than any other cake in America, according to Sharon. We don't do anything special for it, she said. We check it for insect infestations. We've never had any problems. One corner of the cape seems to have been nibbled. And Shannon recalled, uh, I think I said Sharon, it's actually uh, uh, Sharon. I'm sorry. Sharon recalled re uh, a legend of a Cub Scout in the 1950s who bit the cake on a dare. That kind of intimacy is pos impossible now as the cake is kept safely behind glass. Perhaps some future scientist will unlock its DNA or possibly clone it, since according to Sharon, <laughs> scholars cannot find uh, the cake's original recipe. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I thought it was kind of cool that the fact that they have his uh, piece of his wedding cake there uh, on display. Um, I don't know. I thought it was pretty neat. But yeah, so what you're seeing is not only the pictures I, I showed of the outside of the birthplace when I visited there, but of course the cake, the piece of the cake inside, uh, some of the other things, you know, the other artifacts that are inside the uh, Cleveland, um, you know, uh, birthplace there in Caldwell. Pretty cool stuff right here in our uh, backyard of uh, New Jersey. Um, and of course, it makes us very, uh, very happy and very proud here in New Jersey. Uh, even if Cleveland may not have been the greatest president, of course, uh, he definitely wasn't the worst. He's probably average. Usually most historians kind of consider him pretty average, uh, but uh, still pretty cool that he um, he definitely was one of us, one of us uh, New Jerseyans. So pretty cool. Um, so just to read you a little more about his kind of his young days, uh, Grover Cleveland uh, began his career as a lawyer. After a brief stint out west, Cleveland was offered a clerical job at a law firm by his uncle. He went on to accept the clerkship at former President Millard Fillmore's previous law firm, and after studying the law and being admitted to the New York State Bar Association, he began his own law firm. He was well known as a concentrated, dedicated lawyer who believed in the efforts of hard work. Um... During his time in New York, he was also elected to office as Sheriff of Erie County. He was the Sheriff of Erie County, he was the Mayor of Buffalo, New York, and he was the Governor of New York. Um, so, pretty cool stuff. I mean, you know, he definitely had a pretty co cool career, political career. Um, Grover Cleveland aligned himself with the Democratic Party from the beginnings of his career, and he served as the leader of the pro-business Bourbon Democrats. Despite his Democratic status, Cleveland was revered by conservatives of the era for his commitment to broad reform and fiscal conservatism. His reputation as a reformer defined his presidency so much that when Cleveland ran for office again in 1884, the Republicans backed his campaign. Um, pretty interesting stuff there uh, about Cleveland and you know his early political life and that sort of thing. Uh, what else can I tell you about Cleveland? Um, oh, here's something that's really interesting about Cleveland. It's regarding the Civil War and Grover Cleveland. Hey guys, TJ here with you at Dead History, and I am standing right outside of City Hall in Buffalo, New York, where there actually is a statue of Grover Cleveland. He was actually the mayor of Buffalo. Very interesting. And he was the governor of New York. So, New Jersey native. So I definitely had to take a, a very cool look at this. Whoop. Sorry for that. I have tried so hard to do right. Pretty cool. Pretty sure that was his last words. I have tried so hard to do right. Uh, if I remember correctly. There you go, the 22nd and the 24th President of the United States, Grover Cleveland. Pretty cool, here in Buffalo, New York. And Grover Cleveland. But actually, scratch that. Before I get into the little Civil War fact, I did want to also say uh, Grover Cleveland's first career was as a teacher. Uh, Grover Cleveland was a teacher at the New York Institute for the Blind in Manhattan before deciding to pursue a legal career. 
Uh, Cleveland, as I also said, ran for office in Buffalo and New York State as a reformer. He gained quite a reputation as a fresh-faced politician who fought corruption and patronage. And in 1882, he became Buffalo's mayor. And in 1883, he became New York's governor. Uh, you know, I, I did touch on that, of course. Um, Grover Cleveland also, he was a very, very big man. He was a big guy. Uh, he wasn't called Big Steve as one of his political nicknames for nothing. At 275 pounds, he was actually the second heaviest president after William Howard Taft. Fitness Magazine named him as the least healthiest president because of his penchant for beer drinking and cigar smoking. Now, I'll tell you something. Being from New Jersey and the fact that he <laughs> was named the least healthiest president because he liked to drink beer and smoke cigars, I mean, it almost sounds like uh, a very stereotypical character Right out of the Sopranos or something. You know, like Tony Soprano sitting there puffing on a cigar. So, uh, yeah, it's a little stereotypical, in my opinion, of the uh, New Jerseyan whole thing. Uh, but I, I think it's pretty funny, actually. So, uh, there was pretty good there. Uh, pretty interesting stuff there. Now, to the Civil War thing I was going to touch on. Cleveland paid a substitute to take his place in the Civil War. Um, yeah. Yeah. I found this to be absolutely fascinating. Um, not a lot of people know this at all, actually. And when I was really researching more about Cleveland, I was like, wow, that is unbelievable, to be honest. Yeah, Grover Cleveland, he paid to avoid conscription in the U.S. Army during the Civil War. The American Civil War waged on from 1861 to 1863. And in 1863, the Enrollment Act was passed, which required all able-bodied men to serve in the army or else hire a substitute in their place. Cleveland had just been appointed as assistant district attorney to Erie County, and he decided to pay $150 to hire another man, Polish immigrant George Beninsky. That was the man he hired, George Beninsky, to serve in his place. Cleveland's two younger brothers served in the war. Uh, so pretty interesting stuff. Um, I don't know. I found that really fascinating. The fact that the man, he paid to like not be a part of the Civil War. He, you know, he just wanted to focus on his political career. Uh, so he paid a Polish immigrant to take his place. And 150 bucks back then, that was, that was a good chunk of change. So really interesting, especially for Grover Cleveland, who is very well known for being very, very fiscally conservative. So... Um, kind of a cheap, uh, you know, penny-pinching kind of man. So uh, pretty interesting stuff. Another interesting thing, Grover Cleveland actually executed uh, men when he was uh, a sheriff. Yes, this was another really fascinating thing I found fascinating. Grover Cleveland personally executed two men. During Grover Cleveland's tenure as Erie County Sheriff, uh, that's Erie County of New York, Erie County Sheriff. It was his duty to execute convicted murderers or pay a fine to avoid the responsibility. Notoriously stingy, Cleveland chose to hang Patrick Morrissey in 1872 and a man by the name of John Gaffney in 1873 rather than pay the $10 fine to have a deputy do the gruesome deed. So yeah, he executed two men himself. Can you imagine? Future president of the United States, literally as sheriff of Erie County, executed two men himself. Um, does not get much more interesting than that. Could you imagine the backlash and the social media and the media press uh, covering that in this day and age of 2021? You know, that a future presidential uh, candidate were, had previously executed men at when he served as sheriff. Um, yeah, definitely different times, that's for sure. Um, crazy stuff. Kind of one last thing I'll touch on in this part one, um, you know, leading up to the presidency. Grover Cleveland was actually one of only seven U.S. presidents who never attended college. Grover Cleveland received an elementary education at the Fayetteville Academy and Clinton Liberal Academy. In New York. However, while at Fayetteville, the Cleveland family's financial situation soured, as I said earlier. Cleveland left school in order to support the family by working as a clerk at a small store for an even smaller salary. 
Cleveland eventually returned to school, but when his father did pass away, he left school again to find a way to make money and take care of his mother. His brother got him a position as an assistant teacher, and Cleveland never attended college before jump-starting his career in law. So, um, I don't know, I thought that was pretty interesting too, that uh, he's one of only seven presidents to never go to college. Um, I don't know. Pretty interesting guy. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not just saying that being biased, being that he's from New Jersey. Um, he's just kind of an interesting dude, I think, at least. So, um, pretty cool stuff. I uh, We're going to get into uh, more things, of course. Um, oh, another thing I will uh, just touch on, Grover Cleveland's nomadic youth. Uh, he grew up in New York, as I said. His father, Richard Fowley Cleveland, was a Presbyterian minister who moved his family many times when he was transferred to new churches. He died when his son was only 16. Cleveland was only 16 when his dad died. And leading Cleveland to leave school to help his family, he then moved to Buffalo to study law and was admitted to the bar in 1859, as I had touched on earlier. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool stuff about Cleveland. Um, he, As I said, he is an interesting dude. He really is. Uh, a lot of interesting things to go uh, over uh, about his presidency, his two terms as president, the only one to serve two consecutive non-terms, as I said and we know. So I hope you enjoyed this part one. Um, it's been a pleasure. I love it. I know this part one ran a little longer than normal part ones, but uh, well worth it for our New Jersey native, our uh, proud native son of New Jersey, Grover Cleveland. Stay tuned for part two. Tomorrow we will jump right into his presidency some of the scandals that surrounded his presidency and uh, some of the other issues that he dealt with as president. And then, of course, we will touch on his death, where he died, and where he's buried in Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, only about 40 minutes of a car ride from my home. So uh, pretty cool stuff. We will get into that tomorrow in part two. Stay tuned. Thanks, as always, for all the support the subscribes, the comments, the questions, everything. You guys are awesome. Uh, I really can't thank you enough. Me and Henry, this has been such an incredible journey. We've actually only been doing this for about four and a half months or so, believe it or not, here on YouTube. And, you know, we already have like 4,300 subscribers and it just keeps growing. And, uh, you know, the feedback and you guys touching base and reaching out to us is uh, I can't tell you how much that means to us because we don't get paid for this. You know, this is just something we love to do. We're passionate about. And uh, we can't thank all of you enough for all the support. That truly means everything to know that we're entertaining you and hopefully even somewhat uh, giving you some knowledge and educating you as well. So thanks so much, everyone. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Take care now. Bye-bye.